Hello friends, welcome back to Little Monkeys and Me. This is episode 19. Hi, I am Fernanda and this is Little Monkeys and Me. This is a mostly knitting podcast that comes to you from North Carolina where I live with my three kids, my husband and our dog Luna. It has been a minute. I feel like I've been saying that lately, but um, there are reasons why it took me long again to come back. So for all of you who are brand new, who have just found me, <clears throat> I am so happy that you're here. So happy to see you. I am so glad that you've stopped by and I hope that you enjoy it. If you do, subscribe, like this video, all those things that help to be more visible out there for other people to see. And for you guys who are coming back to see me, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love engaging with you in the comments, engaging with you on Instagram or on Ravelry. I really do enjoy it. So I am, I do have an email, which is little monkeys and me at gmail.com. You can find me on Ravelry as little monkeys and me. It's going to be right here on Instagram as little monkeys and um, underscore me and that the three places in here, obviously. Um, I think that's all I have for social media. I am happy to talk to you if you, um, if you have any questions or if you want to tell me anything. Uh, what else? <clears throat> for the beginning of an episode, I, I think that's it. So let's move on to, um, just a little bit about what's been going on in my life. And then we can move on to the rest of the podcast. We do have some some things to talk about, admin things, because we do have a cow that is about to start in um, less than a month. So, okay, so where have I been lately? Um, it's funny because we finished school at the end of May, so that was really exciting. We were very excited to be done. I homeschooled my three kids. And um, the end of the school year is always kind of chaotic, but also very exciting. So we're very glad to be done. Um, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to have this whole summer to rest because we worked really hard and, um, to rest and to have fun and to go to the pool and, you know, do summery things with the kids, but also just letting them do their thing and for me to knit as much as I could. And then, um, I usually work at a doctor's office only once a week, even during the school year. Um, my husband, um, because of his different schedules, it works out that he is home with the kids, either doing classes or he's actually, um, or he's just studying. And um, and kind of works out that once a week I go for a few hours. I've been working at this doctor's office. We've known them forever. Um, so I've worked there for like eight years and I only go for a few hours. And, and that works out for us. And she asked me if I could do extra hours this year, I mean the summer. So I said, yeah, sure, I can go an extra day. And then it turns out that my friends, uh, they opened up a crumble cookie um, sh shop. I don't know if you've ever had them there. I think I believe they're only in the US, but they're excellent cookies. I'm not even a cookie person and I think they're super delicious. And they've opened now a second shop and they needed extra help. So I said, well, you know, extra money, extra help. You know, it kind of works out for all of us. And it kind of has turned out that now I work five days a week. Um, so now I'm very busy <laughs> and my summer has, it looks differently, but you know, you never know the way that, that God was going to lead you. And if he's blessing you with things, you go with that. So that's where I've been. I mean, between the two things and, um, just busy with other life things, it's been it's been a few weeks since I've, I've been here. So that is why I hope that everyone is well. I hope that you are finding yourself uh, making the things that you want and that you can carve some time for your craft. Cause I surely am making sure that I can at least knit a little bit every day. All right, next, let's talk about the cow that um, that Ruth and I are hosting this year again. So if you've watched Ruth, then you know that we are doing it. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that it's happening. Um, last year, we did Across the Pond Shawl Cow. And it is just a fun cow, which means knit along, 
but this one you can crochet too. It's just, we just use the word cal. And um, it just really means that we're all going to be making shawls this summer because we like them, because they are one size fit all, because they are wonderful presents, because they keep you cozy in the winter. And um, depending where you live, I mean, here in summer, you can't even wear, I can't even go out with a very light shawl, I don't think. I think I would die very very fast it gets really hot here in north carolina but um but once you know fall gets here and winter and spring you can definitely wear a shawl um and i just love them i love them so much like i said they're great gifts um if you find a really good uh one shawl pattern like one skein shawl pattern then you can use that really precious skein of of yarn that you have and you can use it and it's gonna be one spectacular you know garment or accessory instead of having to use it into a garment so um we're going to be doing it both in Ravelry and and on Instagram and on Instagram it's gonna be hashtag ATPS Cal 22 and that's gonna be for your castons it's gonna be for your um, ongoing projects but once you've finished your project and if you want to be entered into the finished object uh, kind of drawing then please add it to hashtag ATPSCAL22FO. FO stands for finished object. Last time we didn't do that and we had to go through I mean it was it was more work than needed to be done when you can do two hashtags so this time we're doing it better. Now there's going now Ravelry. It's a bit different. Um, I don't find it to be super user friendly, and some people cannot use Ravelry. That's why there's two options. But if you do love doing Ravelry, Ravelry, and if you want to quote unquote double dip, because you can enter it on Instagram and you can enter it on Ravelry. There's going to be a chatter thread on Ravelry. It's already set up. I will put the link below on the description box. And, um, and you can click it or you can also go to my Instagram account and you can go on my profile and there's a link there that will take you to the my group, like my rubbery group uh, for, little, for this podcast. And there are two threads. One is the chatter thread where the same thing, you can post, you can ask questions, you can post um, your progress, you can post what you're planning on making. So it can be just your yarn and your pattern at the very beginning on cast on day was July 1st. And um, I will be kind of in charge of that one, but Ruth is great at also going in there and commenting. I love seeing what you're making. And um, the good thing of that one that it's numbered. So once you do, oh, you know, let's just find a random number between one and whatever. Um, it's really easy to find it because you don't have to count. You just go to that person who has that number. So I guess that's a good thing of Ravelry. Um, um, and then there also there's another thread, which is the finish object thread. And that is no chatter. So that one, um, you can't talk to each other. You just post your finished object. The rules of the cow are very simple. We don't want to make it anything crazy. It goes from July 1st to September 30th. And um, so you have the whole summer. You can make as many as you want. Participation gets points too. Like, you know, like that's why we have so many different ways of getting gifts in um, prices. That's the word. Um, so if you want to donate a price, you don't have to, but if you want to, I have had two bags donated and um, I will be looking at some yarn that I can buy for the for the prices. Uh, we will ship worldwide, depending who wins. And um, yeah, so come participate. So the rules, like I said, shawls, any size shawl, one skein, five skein, what in between, whatever you want. A pattern that you make up, pattern that exists, whatever you want. You can use a whip, which is a work in progress, only if it's 25% or less already finished. So you cannot you cannot have it almost a cast off and then enter it, you know. It needs to be after July 1st, unless it's 25% or less. So if that makes sense. Um, it can be any shawl, it can be any fiber now. 
It can be acrylic, it can be cotton, it can be bamboo, it can be silk, it can be actual wool, whatever you, it can be a combination of that. It could have nylon, whatever you want, whatever makes you happy, whatever's in your budget, whatever is needed in your wardrobe. So whatever it's great for a gift you know sometimes i i use a lot of acrylic for gift giving because not everyone wants to take care of um wool i personally love knitting with wool but i have i have combination of all things in my in my collection of yarn um so yeah so it can be any fiber that you chose that you choose to use it can be knitted or crochet or can be knitted and crochet if you can do both whatever you want there are some beautiful patterns out there and as long as you can make it with your hands then it's good what else have fun <laughs> that's a rule and if i think if i think of anything else i'll put it on the screen i think that that's that's pretty um that's pretty good if you cannot if you don't use instagram or ravelry you can email me i littlemonkeysandme at gmail.com you can send me your entry and we can enter it for you um, or you can email rudelovestoknit at gmail.com she'll also take your pictures and your entry and we can enter it to the cal for you so then you can still participate even if you don't use any of those two things and I think that's it Oof, that, was, that was a lot of information and I hope that you're still here I hope so. Okay, so should we move on to the main part of the podcast? Why people actually watch these? Let's move on to our knitted things. Okay, so as you can see, I am wearing a finished object. So this is the Fay Summer Top by Irene Lynn. And when I saw this top, I fell in love and I knew that I had to make it. And it is gorgeous and it is beautiful and as you can see it has a lot of detail i do have a white shirt like a white shirt under it because i didn't want my bra to show but i mean i know i know some people don't mind but i do so um it is it is kind of a boxy shape and it's drapey and it has um so yeah so the sleeves go all the way here but obviously it's big and open that's the other reason why i had it another an undershirt because i'm like like everything would show but you know it all depends on how much you're comfortable showing and um lots of bubbles so let's talk about this one let's talk about the yarn that i used and then i'll tell you some about the construction obviously without giving away all the information um because it is a paid for pattern the one thing that i have to say about this um pattern is that i believe it only has five sizes it is quite oversized so um you know a lot of people could wear it but if you want this look not everyone can get it with the with the the circumference that it comes with so that is one thing to consider i think um you know, I was so excited about it. I made size four for myself, but, um, and I probably could have gone with size three because it is quite big. Um, but you kind of want that look, you want that much positive ease. So I made size four, it used um, size four millimeters or US six with uh, needles for most of it, except for um, this part of the sleeves, I believe you use 4.5. Oh, no, no, no. You use 4.5 millimeters, so it's US 7 for the whole thing. And then size 4 millimeter for US 6 for part of it, like the neckline and part of the sleeves, I believe. And um, I use Kotlin DK from Knit Picks. So it is a combination of cotton and linen. So it is 70% Tangus cotton and 30% linen and it is a very soft cotton. It is actually quite nice to work with. The only thing you need to be um, aware of is once you have it in your lap, it leaves like, um, it leaves a lot of fuzz like on your, on your pants, especially if you're wearing black pants, which I usually am wearing like black leggings or something at home. So then you're gonna have like cotton all over 
but other than that it is a very affordable cotton it is sold in 50 grams balls i do not have any i used every single bit so i used 10 balls of this and um and i believe i used every bit and if i if i don't i have some like somewhere like tiny bits i don't know where but for the most part i used all 10 balls they come with 123 yards and i calculated that i needed 10 for my size i didn't swatch but then i looked at me but then i i after i finished um i was gay i was engaged but i didn't swatch well sometimes i do that actually a lot of the times i do that um i use 516 grams in total 516 grams that's how much i used and or that's how much this weighed at the end so every single bit of it only has five sizes it was still a joy to knit the way that you make this is that you will start on the back you start from this part of the back and you knit to a point so it's a panel then you pick up stitches up on one shoulder and you knit into a certain area for the front you put those on hold the back is still on hold and then you're going to pick up stitches from this up to a certain point then you're going to meet and you're gonna knit and then then you're gonna join in the round and you're gonna knit on the round all the way to the very bottom and that's the other thing i mean you can i think i made it a bit longer than in, it called for but that was because i didn't want it too cropped but if you want it more cropped you can absolutely you know make it shorter or if you want it longer you can make it longer just do more repeats of this pattern then you pick up stitches um on here on the sleeves and you make the sleeves with short rows and that was really fun overall i find this was a very very fun fun pattern to make i enjoyed it and it was very addictive like i wanted to keep going and once you join and then you're going in the round and it's going for a long time then you know it kind of you're just i just wanted to be done so i could wear it um it is a bit heavier mostly because it is cotton so it is a bit heavy but it's not terribly heavy and um we'll see how it holds with the humidity and the summers here in north carolina that get pretty pretty warm but if nothing else it could be a spring or layering for fall and it could, i'm gonna wear it definitely um i haven't worn it yet because i wanted to show it to you and um i will i will wear it probably either today or tomorrow for church because it is so pretty this caught oh and the color is called flamingo it is so i got this on sale from nitpick so i believe i paid about 3.95 a ball or so all i know is that for 10 of them it was like less than $40 it was 30 something which is not bad for a pretty big size garment mm -hmm. um you but it was on sale now that I've gone up a little bit I think it's only like two four dollars four dollars a ball or something I mean it is only 50 grams but you know depending on the size you're making you probably can make it for 20 or 30 dollars which I think it's really affordable I am not sponsored by nitpicks even though it's gonna sound like I am because I'm gonna show you a lot of nitpicks. Um, I like to show all kinds of yarn and all kinds of affordability. One, because I cannot afford all the all of the high end. You know, I cannot afford only hand dyed. I cannot afford, you know, <laughs> completely natural. I mean, I wish I could because there's so many beautiful things, but at the same time, I think it is good to to look at other places and see that you can find really high quality things for not too much. So later on, I'm gonna show you cause I got a big box of knit picks. And it's funny cause I haven't been buying a lot of yarn and then I was, then it was knit picks had a sale and all the things that kind of like all the patterns that I've been wanting to make. I had a few in my mind that I wanted to make maybe this fall and 
I was looking for yarn for them and I was able to buy enough to make four garments for the price that I could have made maybe one and a half or two of them. So it was a big chunk, but at the same time I was able to get four, four garments worth of yarn. So it, it was really nice. And as you'll see, all of it is it's for this one because this is the only one that I bought that was you know cotton everything else is 100% wool so you can find 100% wool if that's what you like I prefer it but like I said I've used a lot of acrylic in my life and they for me it has a place in my wardrobe too and it has a place in my home but if I'm trying to look for 100% wool there are places where you can find it so if you can get your hands on knit picks and that is an excellent option and I want to show you some options later in case you're looking for something but you think oh well it's not going to be very affordable I think um I mean yes if you're comparing it to one dollar balls of acrylic you know then maybe it's not going to but if you are looking for some wool I want to tell you some of the options that Knit Picks has once again not sponsored so I kind of wish I was. All right, so this is the Faye top. I will put a link down below for it. I always, on my show notes, I put a link. I talk about the yarn, so I also put a link to the yarn in case there is a fly in my house, which like never happens, and it's driving me bananas. Um, so yeah, so I think that's the two things that I wanted, all the things that I wanted to say about this top. I am so excited about it and um it is a perfect pink color, by the way, because I love pink. So I'm very excited about this. So let's move on to the next finish, finished object. I finished, last time, this was um, Works in Progress. And I finished it like right after I finished talking, like after I recorded almost. So this is the Evermore Vest. Let me show you. It's been, it's been folded for... For weeks uh, the evermore vest it is a test knit so it's not out yet by the bluebird box Anna and she um, she made a version that is a little more feminine that it's called the always vest that has the same pattern on the side of the vest but the other one has like shaping on the waist and um, it's a bit shorter it's more crop though you know Men and women can wear this one too. So it is, um, it's just more of an option for a man if you are thinking of knitting for a man in your life. So I made this one actually for my oldest son. He's 11, well, almost 12 actually, his birthday's coming up. Oh, that's the other thing that happened. My daughter turned nine. Her birthday was this month. It was very exciting. Um, so yes, so I made this for my son. So this is the smallest size that I'm not really sure that it's like small, extra small, medium, or I think it's just by number. So I think, so this is just size one. That's the one I made for him. And if it's some great, I mean, let's just hope he keeps growing like crazy. And I'm hoping I'm uh, like, oh great, I finished it right before it got really hot so he hasn't worn it. And we'll see if it fits him by the time that winter comes. Um. This is oh, a lovely yarn. So this is another very affordable yarn that you can find in big stores here. I bought this at Joanne, but you can order it from um, Lions Brand or you can order it from, um, I think other, I don't know if Michael carries it, but definitely Joanne has it. And I got it with a coupon. So for like 20% off or something. So this is a Fisherman's Wool and it is a, 100% wool comes in big a big ball like this it actually comes with eight ounces which is 227 grams and I used a total of eight 289 grams for the smallest size so that was one in a tiny bit of another so in all reality this cost me like ten dollars maybe eleven dollars 
because I got it, I think these cost, the, the, originally they cost about $9 and I got 20% off. I used one and a tiny bit of another. So 10, $11, 12 tops. If we really want to be like conservative here on the subject. Um, so that's not bad. That's not bad for a hundred percent wool, um, very shippy smell. Oh, it smells so good and um it is excellent it is very lovely the the pattern calls for iron weight but i was able to get but this is worsted weight um wool usually um so i was able to get gauge with the normal needles and it fits great it is beautiful it is an easy knit it's quick because you're using worsted it goes really really fast i think i talked a little bit more about it in my last episode if you want to hear more about the construction of it but yeah this it is all done and now it's gonna go in his drawer hoping it will fit him in the fall and winter since it is you know just a vest he might be able to start wearing it when it gets cooler in the fall um i think that's oh the call the number not the call oh my the color it is oatmeal and that's the color of it all right let's move on to the next finished object the next finished object is another test net that i showed you last time it is also for the bluebird box and this one is the lennox pullover i was able to finish this one also pretty soon after the thing with me and test nets, I love doing test nets, by the way. I love helping the designers. I love being able to uh, be part of the process because me personally, I'm not saying I will never try to design something, but not everyone is meant to be a designer and that's okay. You know, I can enjoy music without being a composer. I can enjoy the patterns without having to design. I can, you know, enjoy many things without having to actually have the skills to do it or, or work on getting those skills. Um, we don't have to do all of it, but you know, it doesn't mean I will never try to design. And I have made some things without patterns, just not, you know, designed for my own things. Not enough though to, to try to make it as a designer. It's a lot of work and you need to be really passionate about it. So I am happy to help those who are so passionate about it. Cause I am so passionate about knitting. So, here it is. It is all finished. Here it is. Here are the sleeves. I was debating what, which one I would wear tonight, I mean today, but the cooler weather one won because this is 100% wool and it is too warm to be wearing this right now. So let me do a little close up here of the stitch this is an absolute fun project to knit you knit it inside out because of that stitch the stitch that you saw um so then when you turn it over it you can see the beautiful stitch and the other side it looks like this if you can see it this is what the inside looks like the the sleeves are also on this is the pearl side of the sleeves I'm not much into the reverse stock net look, but I was doing a test net. I mean, I don't hate it, but if I was making this for myself, I would actually make the sleeves the other way. Like I would turn them inside because um, I prefer the, the knitting inside than the reverse stock net. So but that's just me, that is me, but it is still a beautiful, beautiful, Thing. and I was just knitting so I was not gonna start mess messing with her design um so it kind of mean it pushed me to be going outside of my comfort zone which is a good thing because otherwise I probably wouldn't have um I made size three and I talked about this last time um I usually would go with a four a size four but she needed um she had a she had a full, so she asked me if I could do an, a three. So it for me, it has less of a positive ease than it usually would. But with anything else, you know, I'm fine with that. It fit perfectly. It fit just like a sweater would, just not with as much positive ease as you could get if you wanted the look of the actual original pattern. That's the beauty of knitting. We get to decide 
how it's gonna fit into our bodies, what we like, what goes into our wardrobe, our style of clothing, etc. So let me tell you about this. Um, let me tell you about the yarn. So this is Knit Picks and this is Wool of the Undies and it is sport weight. I do not own any other sport weight other than I went ahead and bought this for specifically this pattern. And um, and I got the undyed skeins that they sell that you can buy for either straight up knitting or you can buy to um, dye your own yarn. So this is their bear. Uh, <clears throat> yarn and it is 100 grams gains and it comes with 274 yards i use a total of 528 grams so i used five skeins um and a little bit more and um i believe yes and i have one more up there that i never got to use because um I, I bought extra just in case and so I have a tiny bit there and um, you used US 6 or 4 millimeters the whole entire time which was really nice it, it has a, a detail of, of a folded collar which makes it really I think it look, makes it look even nicer I need to put a tag I mean it does have short rows which I also enjoy I love first of all I love knitting short rows it makes me happy I don't know why it's really fun and I love the look of having a little bit of a higher back than your front so the show rows are done and and the sleeves and you also have um, the sleeves that are not there's no decreases on the sleeve so it's a straight sleeve and you knit the sleeve because this is dumped bottom up so you're gonna knit the bottom you're gonna put it on hold. You're gonna knit the sleeve, or I guess this one starts with the sleeves. You're gonna knit the sleeves. I need it. I actually made two at a time. And then you put them aside, you knit the bottom until the point where you are supposed to join the sleeves. You join the sleeves and then you move, move on to the raglan area, which it is really fun. I think it looks really nice and I am excited for this pattern to be out. Um, I know that Anna has worked really, really hard on this pattern and it was a joy to knit. My my sleeves are a bit short. I mean, no, they're a bit long for me. And that's the only thing that it's kind of hard now to go and fix because since you make the sleeves first, um, you start from the cuff up. So it would be, very very difficult I mean no I'm not gonna fix them so they're a bit long for me but because the cuff is um small they don't they don't come off my my hands so it still works and I don't mind it's very cozy very cozy um did I tell you it was 100% highland peruvian wool so i find this wool to be very soft um for being 100 wool i don't find it itchy now you know that is that's depends on the person and their preference but i don't remember how much i paid per skein but this also turned out to be you know somewhat affordable i mean if i went looking for sport weight hand eyed it would have been so much more so and i can't really think of my lot of spore weight um acrylic i don't think we have i mean i don't even know if they have acrylic i know that we have like dk and worsted a lot of that on the in the stores but a, a sport weight i mean you could probably get a dk and try to get a gauge by changing the needles and it would still come out pretty close so that is an option too if you really like acrylic but i highly recommend knit picks um the wool of the undies the whole wool of the undies kind of it comes in many different weights um it comes in many different colors so it is to me a very good affordable yarn so that is the lennox pullover it is not out yet so i cannot link a pattern as of now 
I'm not really sure when it's going to be. I think it's going to be released this fall because I know that the it, this testnet goes until August. So it's not even over yet. So it's not quite there. But once the Evermore, <clears throat> when the Evermore Vest and the Lennox Pullover come out, I will let you know because <clears throat> they're both beautiful. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. So... I have no idea how you say this. Pipe, pipa, probably pipa dress, pipa. I cannot believe it, like it would be called pipa. So it has to be pipa dress, right? Um, this is the pipa dress. I believe that's how you say it. Let me find you the information for it. I have it written down. And this is by Susie Sparkles. Let me show you this. So my brother and his wife are having their second baby and it's going to be another little girl. So this is the Peepa dress by Susie Sparkles. Isn't it beautiful? This was a really quick knit. It was so lovely. And look at the drape because I used, where is it? It's here. Let me show you what I used. It's the Kobo, um, I have one left of this. Sorry. Rustling, rustling. It is a Kobo, uh, yarn from Lion Brand. And it is the color Pink Rose, which is another perfect pink. Different pink, as you can see. You can probably, I don't know. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Different pink, but also a very lovely pink. And this, it is a combination of cotton and um bamboo yeah rayon from bamboo so it's 51 percent cotton 49 rayon from from bamboo which makes it very very soft and very very flowy the baby is supposed to be born at the beginning of july so any really close really close um so i will be giving this to baby this is the newborn size and um, I have something to say about this pattern. It was a lovely pattern to make, but <clears throat> here's the thing. I've also started making, sorry. <clears throat> I also started making one for my niece, so her big sister. And she is about to turn three. So I was like, okay, well, let me make the size four because it goes from newborn, few months old I can't remember because I didn't really pay attention to those but it goes two years four years six years and I think six years is the biggest well I was like okay well I don't want to make two years because she's almost three and what if you know and then it'll be like it'll last for nothing especially because it is a very summery top I mean dress so you don't you're not going to be wearing it all year so I don't want it to just last for like two months and then that's it if that even fits right so I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and do size four. It was humongous. It fit my five-year-old. He he was like, why are you putting this on? <laughs> but I needed to see if it fit. And it was like even kind of big on him. And she's not even three. So I had to undo it. So I know that that's part of the whips. But I just wanted to talk about it. I'll show you the whip later. It is almost done. I thought I was going to have it done for today. And it was going to be part of my finished object. But let's pretend that it's pretty much finished. I just need to do the very border, like border on the bottom, but I needed to record. So here I am talking about it like it's a finished object. Yeah, so I finished the whole entire um, top of the dress and I was about this on the big dress or a little bit more. I was like two inches on the after like the waistband right here. And I tried it on my son and it was just too big. So I undo the whole thing, which I don't mind. I don't mind undoing it. Um, I, because I knew I was going to be happier because I didn't want it to fit her in two more years. I wanted it to match her, her baby sister. So I ended up, I'm just going to show it to you. What's the point? Let's just pretend we're, I mean, we're jumping around. Let's, let's just say we're jumping around. So this is it. Oh, I'm sorry the needles so this is size two <clears throat> and I made it extra long because that's the other thing I I did it with the amount of length that it said and it was really short 
and of course she's almost three so it wouldn't really work plus I mean I guess it all depends on like the length that you want but I know my sister-in-law wanted a bit longer of a length so then it could last a bit longer and um especially if she's running around playing around you know it doesn't show her endies the whole entire time so yeah so here it is like I said I'm like right there I finished the um, lace on the bottom and now I just have to do like three more rounds and then the cast off so this is almost done let me show you the these are just wooden um they both have just two and um so I put two over there two over here and these are just wooden buttons that I had it is so soft and so drapey and I think this will be very cool like you know as in I mean I think it is cool but as in not hot <laughs> very cool for a baby who's been gonna be more in the summer in Utah which is really hot and um I really hope it fits her and it's not too big because I think I think the newborn size is actually more accurate but I don't know if once she got uh, to be like um the bigger sizes it got a little too big i did go into robbery and i and i read that a lot of people were having issues with the size being a bit too big because i did get gauge and so i'm not really sure um when she did the yoke if if it just was too much and so yeah so it's okay it's okay because I, I I really do enjoy the pattern. The pattern is really easy. Um, it's really fun and it is beautiful. And hopefully it fits the baby. <laughs> um, I mean, it will fit the baby. It's just whether it's going to be a bit big, you know, I'm not sure. And then there's size two. I mean, yeah, so I'm making size two and I think this will fit her, but even with some room. So that's what I'm saying. Like this is size two and it's still a good, I think the yoke area, it's still pretty, pretty big. The one thing I do like is that it's very drapey and it's a bit heavy because it is cotton and bamboo, but not terribly heavy. So when you're holding it like this, where her shoulders would be, it and the neck is not too, too big. I believe that it's gonna stay on her neck and it's gonna, as long as it fits on the shoulders, you know it's fine it does have the option of doing um cap sleeves like this a little bit of a longer sleeves and long sleeve so you can make it all and if you use wool you can definitely wear this in the winter with tights and not undershirt so it is really not just a summer dress it is um you know it can be worn for different just depending on what you wear i mean what you use like what kind of fiber so if you use wool then it will definitely be nice and warm and cozy and you can make it with long sleeves so then it can be worn in the winter so that's also an option and it goes up to from newborn to size six just be aware that the sizing can be you know a bit um it runs big so like i said i use the cow the kobo um from lion's brand and it is absolutely lovely i bought this through joanne they did not have it at the store so i had to buy it online it is 100 grams so for the little tiny one i use 117 grams so one and a tiny bit more and this one i haven't i haven't measured yet but um i haven't weighed it yet but i believe that i've used maybe four or five of these maybe four four of these not i don't remember three <laughs> that's super helpful i will um i will have to tell you guys later because i have no idea i don't remember how many ended up buying i think i bought six and i used four i think four and a bit or three and a bit i don't know super helpful don't know how much so yeah so that is what i used this is pretty affordable i mean especially if you have a coupon which i did don't remember how much i spent for it but for two dresses i think it was pretty nice so and it's lovely the only thing 
I can say. There is something that I can say about this. It is pretty splitty. I think, you know, it is, let's see if I can find, here's the end of this. Can you see how this like splits? Like how easily, this is not even me trying to split. Like this, there's very little, like, yeah. So you can see it has all the, so once you're, when you're knitting with it, I mean, it stays just fine. But there are times when you have to be really be paying attention because one of the little tiny threads is going to come out and it's going to be annoying because then you can see it and then you have to like drop down so just so you can pick it up. So be aware that it is splitting. It is not hard to knit with. I just need to pay attention. Would I still recommend this yarn? I would. It is, it is really nice. It is lovely to work with. It is, it feels beautiful in the hands and it's in the finished object i think the drapiness of it it's so nice and it's cool very cool to the touch so i think it's perfect for summer i believe my friend um alexandra from fiber band she used the same the same one to make an anchors shirt or anchor tee i think it's called from petit knit um and i believe that she used the same one and the same color they don't have tons of the colors. That's the other thing. I wish they had more colors. Um, because, you know, I want more colors of this. But, you know, pink is good. At least they have pink. So, yeah. So, this is what I have to say about this pattern. And I have one more finished object. And these are my May socks. So, I made these socks for myself for the month of May. And I use opal so this is opal yarn and i bought it through the crazy sock lady co her shop she <clears throat> she was she has some opal i don't know if she has some opal right now because i bought them i don't know a few months ago but these are so much fun well first of all look at these colors i love design i mean i love self-striping but also self-design like designing oh it just makes me they just go so fast so this is Opal color 9680. And this is from the Claude Monet uh, collection that they have. And this is the Haystacks and Giverny kind of color. So I'll put a picture of what that looks like. So then you can see where the inspiration came from. So, you know, kind of like the sky and the haystacks and the trees and yeah, so it's kind of cool. This is my normal. I use 2.5 millimeter needles. I do 64 stitches for myself. I think I went 40 for the leg. I, I do 20 um, or so. I can't remember if I did exactly 20 um, because then I noticed, you know, the green was about to start, so I didn't want it to be part of the rib. So it's probably 18 or 20 for the rib. And then I did 40 for the leg um then i pick up stitches i do heel flap and gusset i did a heel uh eye of partridge heel which it is my favorite i know that some people um some people find it pretty but they don't want to do it because they have to think i got to the point that i don't have to think i look at i can look i can look at it and know which one comes next if i forget um so it's really really easy for me um heel flap and gusset I do that garter stitch on the side. So I do two garter stitches on both edges and then I do the eye of parts in between. Um, so it, I think it just looks really pretty. And I also like, I mean, I can pick up stitches without the garter stitch. I don't find, I, for me, it's not out of comfort. I just kind of look the look of it. I really like how neat it looks. Um, so yeah, so it just makes it really neat. And then I go 60 for my foot and then I decrease I it's a wedge toe I believe that's what they're called and I decrease on every other row and I go down until I have 14 stitches on each needle and that fits perfect to my toes and you have to figure out what works for your toes you know some people have really long toes some people have really short toes like me um all my toes are kind of like there 
I don't have a longer toe than the other. Although, I mean, like my big foot, it's bigger and then all of them kind of go down. So it, this works for me. Um, but it's also not so dramatic that I, because I do know that you can make socks that are like right foot and left foot. For me, it doesn't matter because my feet are like, it's pretty equal, <laughs> my little, my toes. So yeah, so this is like a very quick, I still have not started my June socks, which I need to do. Um, oh, did I not bring my yarn? Oh, the, well, yeah, I have to cake, skin, like cake it up so I can start it. I think I'm gonna do that today. I just been dying to finish these because my parents are going out to Utah for a wedding. And hopefully the baby's born during that time too. And they're taking these um, for me. So I need to hurry up and finish. I mean, I'll finish that tonight too. So, and then it'll be completely done. I can give it to my parents and they can give it to the baby. Well, to my brother-in-law. I mean, my brother and my sister-in-law and my little niece. So um, these are done and then I can cast on my June socks. Um, is that all I, I use 63 grams of a hundred gram ball. So yes. So let's move on to my whips. I have a few and I have put, I mean, I added a bunch of new rows to my sea glass tee, but I'm not going to show it to you because it's still kind of, I mean, it was a bunch of rows, but in reality, it's not much of a difference. Maybe I think I'm going to show it to you maybe when I split for the sleeves then you can really see a difference. But, you know, I don't want to be showing it to you every single time because I don't think. So that dress was a whip. We're not going to count it because, you yeah, know, that's almost not a whip. I also added some more to my catkins. And I've now, but I don't want to show it to you just yet. Maybe once I finish the front, because I did separate. Now you have to do a bunch on the back and then you do some on the front. But let's not. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. I wanted to show it to you when I have more progress than that. Okay. So the Crazy Sock Lady is doing summer sock camp. And last year I was like so ready for summer sock camp. And this year I was excited about it too, but life has been a bit crazy. And I'm sorry if. The light has kind of gone weird. I hope it's not too dark. Um, so even though I'm super excited about Summer Sort Camp, I was not like as ready, but I did cast on the day after. I think the 28th was the first day and I cast it on, I think on Sunday. And I finished already one sock. These are gonna be for my husband. These are also opal. And I believe I also got these from the Crazy Sock Lady. I think I bought like three or four. Um, yeah, I got, yeah, three or four, I can't remember. Um, I think the ones that I made for Mother's Day for my mother-in-law, I got through uh, the Crazy Sock Lady. And I already started the second one. Um, these are fun. I mean, they're opal. I love them. This is color 111.24. I don't know if it has a name, but since it's not in English, it's kind of hard for me to read it. So. Yeah, I made it for my husband. I used 2.5 millimeters again, and I used 60 stitches for him though. And then I do 60 here for the leg, and then I do 70 for the leg, for the foot, and then I do the toe exactly like my toe. So <clears throat> also I have partridge, and I use these light bulb stitch counters, um, stitch markers to um, count every 10 rows. That just makes it really easy to know when to stop. <laughs> I took these to the movie theater. Actually, um, we went to see the new Jurassic World movie because my son, my oldest son, and actually all my kids love dinosaurs and they love Jurassic World and Jurassic Park movies. But um, my oldest is up. I mean, you've, you've, if you've been here before, you know how obsessed my oldest is with with dinosaurs and he was dying to go see this new movie like so we went the night it came out and we went and it was really fun actually it was a really fun movie um, this is housed in the knit is the right bag that i bought last year from my friend Emily, and i love this i mean look at this this makes me happy i don't know why but it makes me so happy and i did buy so the only thing that i really bought for the camp this year is 
a pen. So I bought the Summer Step Camp pen. pen. Um, just to have. I have the pen from last year. So I got this pen. And um, I could have bought bags and everything. But I have, I have plenty of bags. So I did not feel like I had to buy a specific bag. So that's where this is housed. I will um, cast on my June socks. And also make it, put them, add them to the soccer, the sock. I will cast out my June socks and those will also go towards my summer sock camp. And yeah. So I have no idea how long I've been talking. So let's move on. I want to show you some things that I do have planned for the cow. So let's go with those first. And then I'm going to show you some new, new, um, new yarn that I bought that I told you that I bought through Knit Picks. So you can have an idea of what they have to offer if you're looking for um, some yarn. So, okay. So first I've shown you this before. These I bought um, a while back, um, maybe this fall, the last fall. And I knew that I wanted it for a specific pattern. So I won these, these are from Noro. And these are, I believe it's a 200 gram balls yeah they're both 200 grams and these are 100% wool I mean if you touch them they're a bit itchy but I don't think they're very itchy actually and these are going to become a night shift shawl so who was I watching I think Nikki from Knitting with Cat Hair has used these to make a night shift cow I believe and um well not the same colors but something similar i think she used noro that noro balls so i am using ito so these are the ito ones and yeah i will tell you more about it once i've decided like once i cast on but these are going to be probably my first cast on for summer, oh, not summer sock camp. Oh my goodness. I am rusty. I'm like thinking I need to stop recording. I mean, just start recording more often because I obviously forget how to talk. These are going to be the first cast on for our cow for the summer. So this, and then there's another one that I'm going to put a picture here. And it's called the Hypnotized Shawl by Amanita Knits. And she was giving away um, a pattern a few months back. And I chose this one. So I know that it's like different shades of green. And I have these from, um, these from, were from an Oopsie sale from Sorella. So if you know, if you're here, you know I love Sorella yarns. And these are part of, I made a hat from this color for my husband. So it came two of the same color and then it came with two more. So it usually comes with four. And I have three, three left and I believe that you can use three colors. I think that's why I've been saving them. Um, and I've been saving shawl ideas for specifically for our cow. So this one or, these are from their latest Oopsie sale. I didn't say colors. I just said, um, I don't think, no, I didn't say anything. I just figured they'll send me whatever they want and I'm okay with that. So you can see that these two colors are exactly the same and it's almost like a pale rose dusty, but also kind of like a gray tone to it. And this was, has more gray lilac -y color and this it's a variegated one but has both of these colors in it so it works perfectly they're really good at getting you kind of like something that could go together in some sort of some sort of pattern so i'm also considering these colors if um for that shawl but i kind of want them in green because i don't think i have a green shawl and I have shawls with these colors, but I don't know. It's hard. I still haven't decided because the other one's going to be my first cast on though. Because I need to also work on some other things. I really want to finish my chestnut. Um, because it, you know, the cow goes until August. Though I was watching Nikki's latest episode and she is, I think, continuing 
the um, Marie Wallen cowl for next year too. But I kind of wanted to finish to this year. It is a fun, really fun pattern. So those are the two that I have like yarn. I have to go through some of the yarn that I have and see if there's any other pattern that I could really um that I could use with some of the yarn that I have I do have like one skeins that I can use definitely for one skein projects I kind of want some of those I want some one skeins and I want bigger shawls so that's where I'm going that's what I'm thinking if you want more ideas because I know this is like really that's it I have more ideas I just need to go through my yarn to look and see if it works but if you want a better video talking all about shawls go and watch Ruth's latest podcast it is all about shawls all about ideas it's showing you some of the shawls that she's made um and like different like how some of them are like one skeins and some of them use more so go check hers out and next if you want to stay this is kind of acquisitions even though it was done a while back are you ready <laughs> are you ready this is a lot so um let me just show you some of it. I don't think, I don't think you want to like watch tons, but more Wool of the Indies. So I bought this one and this is their worsted and it comes in 50 grams. And this is 100% Peruvian wool. And this color is called Oyster Heather. This is gonna go towards an Avena or Avena from Jennifer Stangas. And the moment I saw that pattern when she was working on it, I fell in love. So here's my idea. So obviously I have a lot more of this. I bought, you know, enough for, so this will be my main color. I'll show a picture of what this looks like. And then way back in the, way back in January, I think when they did their hottest hits or greatest hits from Sorella, I bought these. I think I've shown them to you before. This was from their Salem collection. And this is called The Witch House. And I love this color. Now, I have no idea how this is going to knit up. Like, but I want to make this the wheat on, no, it's not wheat, the oats. I think it's oats, yeah, because I think it's oats. The oats that go on the yoke. So with this color as the main color, and these, I'm really, I mean, I have no idea what that's gonna look like. But the moment I saw this, it's what I, I knew that I wanted to make it into that. Will it work? I have no idea, but I'm excited to try. I don't know how it's gonna, like the variegation is gonna go, but I mean, the contrast is pretty good. So I think it's gonna look really cute and the colors are stunning. So this is their worsted, their classic worsted, which is 100% superwash merino wool. And I have two of them and two of them should be enough because I looked it up before I bought it. And if not, then I'm gonna cry because they don't even have any more of this. So it should be enough. And um, so yeah, so that's one plan, okay? All right, so bear with me, bear with me friends. Okay, so next I'm going to put the picture up here. I think these are the four colors that come in this pattern. All right, so next is For Fo for Fox Sake by um, Max the Knitter. And these are the colors that I'm going to be using. Here, maybe if I show them like this so you can see them better. So this is a this is City Tweed DK Weight. It's also from Knit Picks. And this is their 55% Merino Wool. It's not super wash, it's 100% wool, merino wool, 25% super fine alpaca, and 20% Donegal tweed. I have used their city tweed for years. I have made my son's hats. I have made, I have given out hats. I have made my son's sweaters when they were little out of this. I have made many of knitted toys with this. Like I have used this for foxes, like this one, so many times. I have made, I have used this one for cats and other animals. And this one, I believe too, I don't know. I have used, I have used 
th this one I think this is the one I use for one my two sweater little my two old <laughs> I have used this one for sweaters for my two boys um it is an excellent yarn it does peel a little once you um but you can depeel it so but it's it's gorgeous and the tweed I absolutely love so this is gonna be the main color of the sweater if you get close enough to the picture you can see that the yoke and the background of the yoke it has a different color so it's gonna be this one this is gonna be for the foxes and this is gonna be for the foxes like face like the the lighter parts of the face and then I believe you use like for the glasses you use this color so I believe it's just four colors um it's kind of hard to tell because there's just, like, so many things in here but yes so I got enough to make my husband the sweater and that this is not now it's gonna be done this fall because I have other things that I want to finish this summer so including my chestnut so and shawls of course and socks oh oh my so many things okay and the last so the other the other you know I bought enough yarn to make this and this was the first thing that I made because I knew I needed to make it so now let's show you the other so I already showed you two different kinds of yarn that they sell that is 100% wool wool of the Andes and CD tweed that has you know a combination of different fibers but it's still wool um well and, you know alpaca so I'm probably gonna I'm a little allergic to alpaca so I'm definitely gonna be dying when that's why I like my nose is itching but I still use it I I don't care oh okay this one has like a bunch of colors i believe that's it okay let me move this so we can so i can show you so, okay so this is for um no place like gnome by martina muscova and these are the colors If you can see, I mean, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I'm showing you a picture. So her colors, I love the colors that she chose, but they're a bit too bright for me. So I kind of went a little bit lighter. So my yellow, it's more pale yellow. And this one is from their palette collection. So palette, it's a, hun it's a fingering weight. Um, so I bought DK and Worsted and this is fingering weight. And it is... I think it has over 100 colors and it is pretty affordable. I think it's a 50 gram ball, but I think they're about $4 something a ball. So, and this is supposed to be a crop cardigan, I mean, sweater. So my main color is going to be this yellow. And you can see that, you know, the different, it, it's, it's a bit lighter than the original. You know, like my greens are more of this green. This is a I will tell once I'm once I need it I'll tell you all the colors because you know you know probably don't want to hear another lovely pink I made many things with this pink I use a lot of this um palette to make the little clothes for the knitted animals that I've made um it is wonderful it is a great 100% wool it is a uh, Peruvian highland wool so to me it's very um affordable very soft to the skin I think it's really nice and it's 100 percent wool so if you're looking for options so this is a white um i wanted off white but not have any and i was like oh i just need one ball i think it's one or two i think i just need one ball i'm like i'm not going to then buy it because then you have to pay shipping but if you spend a certain amount you don't want to the shipping would be more expensive than getting one ball so i was like fine i'm gonna go with white but um, yeah, so that's kind of like my three big projects that I want to work on in the fall. Not to mention, I'll finish all the whips that I have. So if you're follow so if you are listening until now, one, you're amazing, and two, thank you for watching so much. Um, I really do appreciate um, you guys. Do you guys are here watching me babble for a long time about different things that are, make me so excited so i hope that you make that you come to our cow that you join us 
um even if it's your first shawl i know some people uh were saying they wanted to join last time but didn't some people uh, i had somebody tell me that they learned to knit because they wanted to join last year but they've learned to knit and now they're gonna be knitting this year um <clears throat> so people who joined join us last year and are so excited to make some more this year so <clears throat> i am so excited to have all of you join us on july 1st oh and there's also, uh, Ruth and I have been talking about doing a Zoom night. So we haven't figured all of that out. And <clears throat> it's going to be a time that works for both of us. And hopefully it'll work for all of you. We're probably going to do it. You know, it's not going to be like launch day no, or, or like the day that we start the Cal. But it's going to be soon after. And if that works out, we might do another one. But I don't know. But for sure, we're going to do one. We just don't know yet and we'll let you know when the time is so the best way to to know what's going on though it's to follow us on instagram i can't promise that i'm gonna be making you know super uh, i know ruth is better so follow her too because she's she's better at making um videos more often than i am and so yeah so i hope that you have a wonderful weekend and that you join our cow and then you come and make some shawls with us and I wish you the best. Until next time, happy knitting. Bye-bye.